The visibility of anti-Asian hate crimes has been on the rise in the United States recently highlighted by tragic incidents like the mass murder in Atlanta last week and other violent attacks happening right here in Northern California. So now the calls for awareness and allyship are being amplified all across the world. Diversity and inclusion activist Shereen Anis is here to discuss the recent hate-fueled events and how she's working to make sure representation counts. Hi, Shereen. Hi. So there's this heightened awareness right now, and for the first time, countless AAPI stories and calls to action are being heard. What are you seeing with the work you do? So with the work that we do, because we are activist facing as well as corporate facing, we have the privilege of seeing what happens right from the grassroots. And we're seeing a lot more reports because we encourage people to submit their stories to us of Asian hate, both across the United States and Toronto. Now, I know a lot of people are aware of this, but the, the confidence in the voices that are being raised is something that we've seen a rise in. People are a lot more comfortable with sharing their voices. They don't feel as gaslit as they have previously to when the racial issues have started to be a forefront issue and people are willing to discuss it. So it's definitely really sad and unfortunate that there are so many more stories coming into us here at Representation Counts and the types of stories we're reading from just, you know, people yelling at them in their faces through casual daily interactions all the way up to very serious legal issues, specifically in the Asian community right now since we're in COVID. So why do you feel there's been this surge in anti-Asian conduct, especially during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I credit Donald Trump a lot for this. Um, the rhetoric that he had set up, the narrative that he had set up, um, you know, by calling it the Chinese virus, um, blaming a lot of the Asian community, also with his rhetoric, um, has definitely impacted the lives of the Asian community in a very negative and profound way. And it's really encouraged white supremacy within the country. Right now, we're seeing Asian communities being kind of like the punching bag for all of this. And Donald Trump is very much the person to credit and, and, and to also blame at the same time for this hate that we're seeing. Well, one of the things that we're hearing a lot more about um, just in this past week is that Asian American women, they're being hypersexualized or made out to be less than, and that's reflected in, in why the, the shooter last week chose those, those spas in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's very, very unfortunate because also this is um, a lot of People have also brought up that, you know, this part of the Asian community, um, what women face in that community has been invisible for so long. And unfortunately, the shooting in Atlanta has brought this issue to the surface because, um, you know, as the model citizen and everything that the usual stereotype is with the Asian community, people don't often see this side of it. And so it, it it's something where it just really, really brings to the forefront how vulnerable um, people of color, and in this particular case, Asian people are so vulnerable and not protected and you know it's being blamed on a bad day and not being called for what it is it's just so unfortunate and this is something that you've been working on not just uh now that mm -hmm. that people are talking about it more but yeah. why has racism directed toward asian americans in particular gone so unrecognized and unchallenged so I think a lot of it has to do with the general stereotype that, you know, like all Asians, they are doctors or that all Asians, they have secure lifestyles because of secured earnings, because they're so bright and brilliant. Although that is true for them in some, in most cases, arguably, um, a lot of this other, um, like, I think that people like to hate on that and, and use that as that, you know, because they're so well off and they're doing so good that um, it's hard to believe that they could be hated in this way. And, and what you said, I mean, obviously you can't put the entire Asian population under that yeah. one umbrella because yes, you will find the people that have been okay. successful, but there's also the people that, that are middle class or, or even lower income and poorer. Um, and that's kind of yeah. feeds into that model minority mentality. Why is that not necessarily a good thing? That's not a good thing because, again, it overlooks what the true struggle is and the entire history of what the Asian community has faced when it comes to the context of America. You know, um, I think that as a part of the colonization strategy that racism um, has used and um, that the that that colonizers had used in America, um, it overlooks and basically dehumanizes the the very real struggles that Asian populations face. And and 
it, it's so important to understand, like you just said earlier, the variety of people that exist in that spectrum, you know, like not just from poverty or like uh, middle class to upper class, there's also, you know, different religions and different things that people identify with. Um, there's just such cultural as well as um, a variety of diversity there that people just don't often talk about. Right. And as we're talking, you know, I'm just thinking this is such a layered issue. Um, you know, I'm Filipino American, so I fall under that umbrella. And this is nothing new to me. It's something that I've kind of grown up with. But now uh, mainstream is talking about it a little bit more. I guess we can say it that way. Let's talk about what you're doing in your work. How are you trying to help stop the AAPI hate and improve racial equality? Right. So right now, AAPI hate is definitely at the forefront. But I mean, the type of work that we do has focused on just human rights in general. Um, and so right now, there is this influx demand of uh, shining light on the Asian community, and rightfully so. So what I've always worked on, what my organization works on is, you know, getting very intimate with people's stories and experiences, because the justice system can often fail to recognize that. And, and, and the different statistics and um, different data that is collected to help policymakers make decisions is often overlooked because those stories aren't presented to those people. So what I do is um, whether things are, you know, during Black Lives Matter or through Islamophobia or through the Mexican border, whatever the issue is, like all times, 365 days a year, we're constantly focusing on gathering, collecting data and information, stories, going one-on-one -on -one with people, even within the pandemic, you know, staying within safe social distancing, encouraging people to come and reach out to us and share their stories um, so that we can prevent a lot of this from happening and, and work with people who are in positions of power and influence with the stories that we gather, whether that's corporate or, or politics or what have you. Shereen, what's one simple piece of advice you can share with our audience if, if they want to make a difference, if they want to kind of get involved in this movement? Yeah, so the most important thing is, again, to really realize it's human life, that when it comes to these positions where people are being faced with these adversities and these injustices, the best thing you can do is how you can show up for them. It's really about them in this moment. It's not about how you feel that the allyship should look. That's when performative allyship comes in, and that doesn't help anyone. So the best thing is to really be genuine and authentic and understanding what people need, how they need it, and really just showing up for them in order to keep moving this forward where, you know, there's a lot more positivity in society and our lives all together. Shereen, I really want to thank you. You have some great insight and advice that you shared with our audience. We appreciate it. You can learn more about active allyship at representationcounts.com.